call to order the meeting of the Town of Sebastopol Board of Supervisors for Monday, September 23 at 7 o'clock. I'll ask that you rise and join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call to establish the form. Supervisor Weidman. Here. Supervisor Tice. Here. Chairman Zipperer. Here. Supervisor Wolfo. Here. Supervisor Stavanis. Here. We're all present, and the next item would be the meet and greet. Normally, our custom to meet. Those that are in the audience this evening, we have introduced ourselves, and Linda is our Linda Wayne is our town clerk treasurer. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to go through that again. So why don't we start with you, Greg? My name is Greg Coulter, Star County Salt and Water. Uh, here in case you have a question on Moon's Lake Water, or if you have questions on Frank Mighty's project, which oh. is starting this past day. Very good, mm -hmm. Carl. Carl Schultz, came to. Compliment the board on the fine art exhibit. Victoria Sarinich, and good evening. I live at 4145 Cherry Road in Sebastopol, and I'm here as an observer for the League of Women Voters. But in addition, Carl and I have delivered a letter for you from door property owners, and it's supported by the following local organizations the Ridges Sanctuary, the League of Women Voters of Door County. The Door County Environmental Okay, Council. I think we're going on beyond the meet and greet, but... Did I'll, you want me to speak at a later point in the... Uh, what what me, is it in, in regards to I don't have a letter from you? Oh, I, we just delivered it to Linda, uh, and I would like to uh, read this, take this opportunity to read this letter into the record for the benefit of the Sebastopol residents that are unable to be here this evening. Well, it, usually it, it helps if the chairman knows what's going on, you know. Oh, well, at the public <laughs> meet and greet, I thought that how Okay, but what is, what is your letter in regard to? It's in, re oh. it's, it's in regard to the 2014 budget planning mm -hmm. for okay. public laws. I, I placed it into the budget. Go folder. right ahead. Okay, and it's supported by the following organizations, the Door County Environmental Council, Lakeshore Natural Resource Partnership, Sustain Door, Crossroads of Big Creek and Wild Ones, and we thank you for this opportunity. Uh, September 23rd, 2013, regarding the 2014 budget planning for public lawns. Dear Chairman Zipperer and, and Supervisors for the Town of Sevastopol, the organization represented on this letter have joined together to advocate for safe lawns in Door County and bring an end to the practice of repetitive and costly application of pesticides, including herbicides, to private and public lawns. When planning your 2014 budget, we, the undersigned and your neighbors, ask that you consider safer alternatives for public lawns, parks, and playing fields. The commonly sprayed herbicides are harmful, especially to children and pets, causing various forms of cancer and endocrine effects. The warning flags and re-entry limitations are ineffective and insufficient. Rather than advise against or prohibit entry, make the lawn safe to walk and play upon. Moreover, universal application of herbicides is expensive and unnecessary. With a little planning, a lawn or a playing field can be taken off pesticides and synthetic fertilizers. The natural lawn and field will be more drought tolerant and cost less to maintain. Please keep these considerations in mind on October 3rd as you develop the budget for 2014 and make contracts for lawn care. Local landscapers can provide safe alternatives if you ask. To learn more or contact us, go to doorpropertyowners.org on the web, respectfully submitted by Patrick Fitzgerald and Dr. Peter Sigmund on behalf of Door Property Owners and Safe Lawns in Door County, Marnie Caskey on behalf of the Ridges Sanctuary, Town of Sebastopol residents, Peter Wyatt, Russell May, Bob Graff, Carl Schultz, and myself, Victoria Sarinich. And thank you very much for your time. Okay, we'll uh, put that over in our budget. Seriously, yeah, October three. Here, Craig, tonight's presentation. All right, very good. <laughs> Thank you. And we didn't meet the videographer, but everybody knows Laddie with the new haircut today. 
The agenda has been properly noticed? Yes, it has been. And a motion then to adopt. I'll move that we adopt the agenda as printed September 23rd, 2013. I'd like to second that. Motion made and second. Any comment, question? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Approval of the minutes from August 19, 2013. I'll make a motion to approve the motion minutes. Motion by August. John and a second by... Second. Chuck, was that? Yep. To approve the minutes of the 19, are there any corrections? Can never be any correction. She does such a commendable job. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? And it's carried. Financial reports, questions, or comments? Look okay, again at the budget as 2013 from January through August. And then the account balances and the transactions listed by date. If there are no questions, I motion to approve and put lace on file. So move. Second. Motion by Dan, seconded by Chuck. Comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And it's carried. Oral committee reports, do we have any? Chuck, do you want to give us anything on the cast? They see it's uh, going first, pretty good. First off, with the um, room tax, uh, right. Door County Tourism Zone Commission. Senators Luther Olson and Gary Byes are seeking co-sponsors for a room tax bill they plan to reintroduce, requesting that the lodging industry and are requested by the lodging industry and the Association of Visitor and Conventioners. The legislators introduced a similar bill last session with the league strongly opposed. And like last session, this bill removes municipal discretion in the spending of room tax revenues for tourism promotion and development. It also eliminates the grandfather clause that allowed the municipalities with room tax ordinances prior to 1994 to continue to use their room tax dollars as they see fit. The bill is uh, requiring municipalities that currently retain more than 30% of a room tax revenue in their general funds to reduce that amount to 30% over the next six years. It requires the municipalities to forward 70% of the room tax revenue that must be spent on tourism promotion and development to a tourism entity or a commission. It would allow a person collecting the room tax to retain 3% of the tax collected to cover the person's processing fees if the person pays the tax to the municipality as prescribed by the municipality. That has to do with people using credit cards. Requires the municipality annually to certify and report to the DOR the amount of room tax revenue collected the room tax rate imposed by the municipality in the previous year, as well as a detailed accounting of the amounts that were forwarded to a commission or tourism entity, and such an accounting for the amounts of at least $1,000 expended by the commission or the tourism entity. And it would allow a tourism entity or tourism organization to file a written complaint with the municipality if the municipality is mistakenly or not allocating using room tax revenue as required by statute and creates an optional opportunity for a mediation instead of immediate litigation. Now, the League of Municipalities strongly opposes this bill again. They're asking that everybody contact their legislators and tell them not to sign LRB 1901 and LRB 2963. It seems they've been having trouble with the people that were grandfathered in before 1994, where the room tax money was just put in the general fund and the municipality spent it as they see fit. Uh, 
we have no problem with that being corrected, but it's all the other little things in there that they are starting to uh, come down on. I mean, if, if our municipality has to file all these reports with the DOR, we turned everything over to the commission to start with, so the commission would have to supply all those reports. And the biggest problem here is that Gary Buys never came back and discussed anything with our local tourism organization, which is working according to the laws and it's working fine. They have a problem with some other places in the state and they just up and decided to write some laws and don't even know where they're coming from. So uh, until they sit down and really have a discussion, we do not believe that this law is in the best interest of our municipality. Did I hear you correctly? There's going to be a reduction of the 30% to what? No. In Door County, we have a commission collecting the tax for the entire county. Okay. Other places, the <laughs> municipality collects that tax. Yeah, okay. In certain places, they are not turning over the 70% to an entity and spending it on tourism. They were just spending it on tourism on their own or you know, retaining the funds in the general fund. A big argument always came up that uh, the municipality has to fix the parks, keep the beaches clean, pick up the garbage, repair the roads, and they attribute all that to the local people but also to tourism. And the tourism uh, industry is saying that's your problem. It's it, the tourist is should not be held accountable for fixing the infrastructure. Well, if we didn't have the infrastructure, the tourist wouldn't come in the first place. Yeah. So, <laughs> Chuck, do you know what the administrative overhead is for for the uh, room tax? For our commission, it's 4% of the tax collected over the whole county. That's, that's, that's what total. we retain. That's what we retain, but the visitor, I mean, the... Uh, I'm saying it as, as myself as the commission, yeah. commissioner. The commission retains 4% of the tax for, for administrative purposes. Right. We had to develop our own software, hired uh, people to put this computer programming together. Uh, we retain a very extensive database on the tourism numbers and the dollars and where the money is spent. We, we get together monthly with the Door County Visitors Bureau and they supply us with reports. Uh, I mean, we really have an organization that's working right, here. Right. If okay. the rest of the state would follow our lead, yeah they really have something. Instead, they're trying to destroy it. Well, we're, we're really in compliance with this, this bill. We're overly compliant. Okay. Your advisor is going to be at county board on Thursday. So, can you give me something to share? Okay. Can give it to me. So we, we only get, we take 30, we retain 30 percent, 4 percent administrative. We don't even retain, we receive. We uh, receive. The commission collects the tax, we receive, as the municipality, 30%. What's collected? The commission retains 4% for administrative purposes, and the remaining 66% goes to the tourism entity, which is the Door County Visitors Bureau. Right. If this thing were to pass as it stood, it does not impact our 30%, though, correct? Not at this point. Uh, right. the, the only thing that's, that they didn't mention in here, though, is they would like to see the 4% uh, administrative cost or whatever amount it would re uh, be taken out of the municipal 30%. 30%. That's kind of what I figured. Yeah. Rather than taken on the top. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Of course. And then the other kicker in there is uh, <laughs> it's not in the bill. I mean, it, it's another part of the tourism entity. Uh, uh, we investigate all leads of people who are renting and not paying taxes, or they are not permitted. Every transient renter in the, in the county is supposed to be permitted by the commission, 
and collect the tax and uh, turn it over to the commission. And those that are not doing so manage to get caught. I mean, we, we have a six, seven of them every month on a, on a list that are going through a process on our policy as to uh, notification and, and warnings and that. Eventually they wind up in court. Uh, some of those court <coughs> cases we win, but some we lose. Uh, when the commission wins the case, the taxes are paid, the penalties are paid, the commission keeps the money and uses it to go after the next people. Uh, the problem now is some of these people don't pay their fines and some of the cases that we actually lost or didn't lose for, for reason other than the people went bankrupt and there was no money to, to collect. Uh, the commission is thinking about turning that bill back to the municipality. Uh, if they lose a court case for any reason, they want the municipality to pay the cost of that litigation uh, out of our 30 percent. The tourism commission, our, our local commission. This was brought up at a executive meeting and uh, it was shot down at the last meeting, but it most likely will come again, and uh, it's something to stay on top of. Okay, thanks. Give me a copy of that. <clears throat> the, okay, did you have uh, anything on the kiosk? The kiosk is going along real well. Uh, the Posts were erected, the, the concrete is poured. We were waiting for the excavator to come in and do the final grading today. Uh, evidently they got sidetracked. They should show up in the next day or two and the landscaper is waiting. So as soon as that's done, landscaping will go in. The panels are supposed to be shipped on the 23rd. Hopefully we'd have them within a week. Uh, it was uh, my hopes that the whole project would be up and running by the end of the month. Uh, it looks good, uh, whether it happens or not. <laughs> Never know. The weather could change or <clears throat> something else might go wrong. But Wisconsin Public Service supplied a grant toward this project. Uh, it was a $15,000 grant, but the Proceeds were spread over three years, $5,000 a year for three years. They requested a photo shoot of one of the kiosks or, or maybe a couple of them to put in the annual report. Their photo uh, opportunity has to be completed by October 2. So that was the big push to get our kiosk as complete as possible so that we could get in that. Yeah. Photoshop. Will we need actors, Chuck? Somebody to stand there and look good in front of the board? Yeah. Are you okay. available, Gal? Oh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. He's stand with lean on the shelf. Was notified today, though, that, uh, that they had chosen the Egg Harbor kiosk as to where they want oh. to take their picture. Uh, whether that old yet or not, we're still going to argue that fact because we are the lead in to this project. Uh, the, the byway starts and ends down there by Grandma Tommy, so uh, we feel that ours is probably the proper place to start with. And along those same lines, uh, late entries tonight are Steve and Kate Lobenstein, who are the owners of Grandma Tommy's and have really might just shoot their pictures so everybody can see them. They're the shakers and the movers on this whole thing and really been uh, gone overboard as far as allowing us to be on their property and as well getting the whole uh, the whole act together so Chuck has been working with them on a regular basis. 
you know, what you see there is uh, very nice. So we thank you for your participation, and it would be nice if we had nice if we had more people in the community <laughs> come forward as you have. Right. Our whole project is coming. It, it is so close to being right on budget that it's not even worth arguing about. Had it not been the fact that the WPS grant was spread over three years, we'd have actually been under budget. So uh, right now it, it looks uh, we may be just about $300 over, but we're not finished yet, so there's still trimming we can do. Okay. You uh, want to say anything, Steve or Kate? Well, thanks for your participation. You're welcome. Much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, any other oral committee report? Okay, the written copy, part of your agenda was the Door County Tourism Zone Commission and Executive Committee meeting. Also the Plan Commission <clears throat> for the town, August 14th. The next item would be the license and uh, permit. We'll show the uh, permits issued by the Door County Planning Department and also those issued by the Independent Inspection limited for the activity going on with their inspection involved. <coughs> the license and permits concluded, continuing business. The uh, discussion and action, I indicated uh, last time around that mm -hmm. I would make contact with uh, Dean Bullenberg from the University of Wisconsin Extension in regard to the application of, or the uh, landscape application that we had our previous discussion on. I made that contact on the 6th of September. I was assured that uh, we were in compliance as we provided him the uh, copy of the information provided by our applicator. And uh, the only recommendation coming forward was that if we could afford more time, although it's only required uh, that it be dry, uh, it would be to our advantage to allow more time before there was any activity on the on the grass or on the uh, uh, applied area. Liability wise, uh, we are protected by the applicator. Uh, True green is it? Or spring, spring green. Spring green. <laughs> and according to their warrants and everything else, we would not be responsible. I do know that we've had an argument about it in the past, Discussion. and I do not wish to continue that. We'll do it down the line of a piece, uh, tonight's indicator. Uh, apparently there's some interest with uh, whether or not we're gonna budget money for that application, so. We'll take another look at it uh, October 3. And as far as tonight is concerned, I was, I was questioning Dean relative to some of the comments brought up by Dick and others here at the meet. And he assured us that there would be no, no liability on our behalf, although he did encourage us to uh, allow a little more time in the drying of the uh, product. Next item would be the Dunes Lake uh, Sebastopol Sanitary District. It's a nutrient polishing proposal. It is here tonight for a 
FYI, but Greg Colthurst is here. He's been active in not only that, but the Fragmite uh, situation. So, Greg, you want to give us a uh, down and dirty on this one? Sure. Uh, a couple months ago, I had uh, three environmental engineers come up here and tour the sanitary ponds, Dunes Lake, and kind of the watershed in general, and kind of gave them the idea and the summary what we have done as a committee at the town level. And uh, three engineers were actually pretty excited about having a system that could work without electricity, had enough land to do it, and could polish uh, the treatment water um, pretty efficiently, very effectively. Um, so it was kind of everything's lined up, everything's there. And uh, at the end of the day, we asked them basically, well, what can we build or what can you do? And they said, well, let's we'll put our heads together and come up with a proposal. So this letter that I, uh, I sent uh, to the committee members and to the town uh, basically says that for the cost of $8,500, they can come up with a uh, concept plan for this polishing cell on, on the school property. And it could be one cell, it could be multiple cells, but essentially what would happen is the water prior to discharge to the creek would go into these polishing cells in that swale area and you would use plants, trees, etc. for phytoremediation of, of nutrients. So you would get nutrient uptake of phosphorus and nitrogen and other nutrients by those plants. Um, it would also increase the time that it would take to get to the creek. It would either, you know, once it flows into the soil and is absorbed by the roots, it still would have to travel horizontally underground before it got to another wetland or the creek. So um, they basically said for a cost of $8,500, they're going to put together a concept plan. That concept plan then could be how much does this cost, how it would work, et cetera, et cetera. The price tag on that would be, of course, much, much higher, but that's when we started looking at grants to actually install something like this. So um, they were pretty excited to put something like this together. Um, the, the proposal went to the district, the sanitary district. Um, however, we are still waiting for the DNR to come up with the limits on their permit. So it's kind of in a holding pattern as to what what does the district have to follow as far as state rules, if anything, anything additional. Um, as with this concept plan, I'm sure they don't want to put anything together until they know what kind of levels they have to meet. So that's where we're sitting right now. Um, we will be looking for some kind of funding to put this together eventually. I thought I read that you might actually get a grant for that. There's one grant that looks pretty promising, but it's only for three thousand dollars. Yeah. So the eighty-five, eighty-five hundred would be for the conceptual plan. For the conceptual plan, they would put this thing together and what the detail costs and how it would work. You've been in contact with David Life on this? Yes, I have. He's in agreement with it. He's he's he likes the idea. He likes the concept. Um, just not going to invest the money until they know what they have to do. Okay. Whether or not they would invest the money in this project. They're waiting for a permit? They're waiting for their permit, which I believe was due in June. Okay. That's what I thought. I thought it was due in June, and they have yet to give them any guidelines on it, huh? And in contact with the DNR, and they say it's close, it's not out for public comment yet, but when it does, I'll share it with you folks. They're looking at all nutrient discharge, I mean, not only phosphorus, but nitrates as well. Right. The, the individuals, especially if you look at the bottom of the letter, that's David Flowers. He's the one that worked with the, uh, the one in, uh, let me out here, Carl. Kettle uh, Marine. In the Kettle Marine Lutheran, uh, Lutheran schools. And that one was primarily for nitrate um, treatments. Okay. <clears throat> uh, but yes, yeah, so nitrates and phosphorus is good. Okay. Has there been any headway uh, or, or any? Positive proof of, of the alum treatments in the pond uh, have that been they, carried out? So. They did some experimental treatments on the uh, what they call a jar test. So they took some water samples out of the ponds, the sanitary ponds last fall, in November, about the time that they would discharge. They were able to get the limit uh, down about 70%, down to about one part per million, I believe. Uh, cost of that at 
think for the year was about five thousand dollars a year. So they could do that as well. So if we go the route of the polishing pond, the elm treatments might not be necessary or could be in addition to it? It could be. It depends on what the limits the DNR are set. I mean, um, yeah. if the polishing, I mean, there's no guarantee that the polishing cell at this point in time is going to reduce it to pick any number. I mean, right. I can say it's going to be better by how much I can. I can't tell you that. Yeah. Um, but the alum treatments, though, that will, that will reduce the phosphorus by about 70%. But, but they would have to do that prior to every discharge. The problem with that is it ties it up within the pond right. and it's still there yet. Where we do some type of phyto remediation, it, it, the plants can take it up as long as it doesn't recycle and it's kept within the plants, then it's probably the easiest way to, to right. get rid of, especially the nitrates. The other problem with the alum treatment is that they are going to increase their sedimentation rate in the ponds, which then is yeah. going to mean they're going to have to dredge sooner. Don't ask me how much sooner. Um, they've talked about wetland systems where it would be just a wetland with plants. Um, the problem is when the plants die, they release their phosphorus. So something like this is upland. It's going to be retained in trees. You could harvest that every 30, 40 years. Um, the idea would be it would also be that this would be a study for the school. Something sure. for them to study. We certainly can put, as far as land consideration, we can put that on a school board agenda, uh, probably at our next meeting, so we could discuss the, uh, you know, the, well, once you know how much extra land you need. Right. Right. Yeah, right now this is just, to get these guys to put some serious hours into it, it's going to cost some money. Okay. So. Well, it's here tonight for an informational item, and That's right. if it needs to be more than that, then we'll have to... Put it on the agenda differently. <clears throat> we thank you for your time. Okay, the next item would be the road work 2014 budget session right around the corner. I'm asking that you all uh, take a hard look at some of the roads that we didn't do very much to this year and see if you have anything that needs to be accomplished in 2012 or 2014. What we do have so far is that the extension of Shower Road from Cape Point Park to the Jacksonport Town Line has uh, the interests of not only the, the park system for the County of York, but also the Dunes, uh, the Whitefish Dunes Park and in the month of November, I will be making an application for some uh, local road improvement program funding. In your uh, packet tonight, you should have had the Town Road Ages Project Questionnaire that Linda and I filled out to start the program. And also uh, a quick uh, proposal, not really a, a guarantee, but option one, two, three, and four as to the application on the uh, shower road project. Be mindful again, these are 2013 prices. So with any increase in oil and or anything else, they would more likely than not be increased for next time around. Forest Road and State Trunk Highway 4257. We did pave the westerly shoulder. Uh, it was after we had the district uh, administrator up here from DOT. And we proposed and we told them what our problems were and how we wanted to correct them. And it didn't take very long after that for us to get the permit to get it accomplished. And of course, the state allowed us to do it, provided they didn't have to give us any money to get it accomplished. Very generous. Yeah. This project still needs a little work, though. The There's some shouldering, shouldering that's going to be done. It's not been completed yet on uh, right. 
like to see that that gets done as soon as possible. We're aware of it. They're aware of it. Just that they had pulled off to do another job. Okay. So if you be mindful of the fact we did talk uh, previously about straightening out the angle of Forest Road coming there. Last time we couldn't qualify for a local road improvement project. And it's really too bad that we have to wait for it accidents and the seriousness of it before they'll give us any authority to make the change. But have we experienced any real problems after that shoulder went in, Steve, or not? The shoulder is just unbelievable. It's just like the northbound traffic. Um, when I got that deceleration lane, the car's able to fly, go by nicely. Yeah. Now with that shoulder, when you go southbound, West side of the road, it just they can pull off at 60 it miles. Just, it just makes it nice. I mean, there's no gravel spitting. It's just it's just smooth, very smooth. Um, I sat out there one one weekend, not not intentionally, <laughs> but I got caught up in traffic going both ways for about 10 minutes. I was sitting on Forest Road. Eventually, I turned around and went the other way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't see any activity that would have we need a traffic light. Yeah. even looked like it was going to be a close call. So. It just makes it safe when people aren't going 40 miles on that gravel. Yeah. Okay. 35 miles, 40, 45, whatever it is, it just makes it a lot smoother. All right. And safe for the people turning on Forest Road, southbound traffic. Okay. All right. Progress. So anyway, the 2014, as I see them, and I'll give you a heads up, you can uh, take a look at them between now and October 3, as we prioritize, I guess would be the term. Uh, we need to uh, take a look at East Dunn from 57 to Weber. That would be St. Peter and Paul Church area. Uh, Jarman. Uh, Clark Lake to Townline. And for some reason, uh, we did pieces of Nelson Lane from Clark Lake to Townline, and whatever we did or did not do, it's just not holding. So we might have to revisit that one. And Clark Lake, although it was accomplished some years ago, uh, it's beginning to break up and from Highway 57 to Leist is in need of some activity. Okay, Highway 57 to uh, okay. And west. That's <coughs> west. Yeah. West like Dunn would be too. also a good candidate. That would be from Martin down the hill to Bay Shore. And the culvert that uh, is south of Bechtel on south of Whitefish on Bechtel is uh, sinking and rising as indicator that we might have to replace that culvert in total. So if you have any others, uh, bring them forward or make a note. We do have two areas of depression. Matthew Road near uh, County Trunk T. That would be by the Gilbert Farms. Elaine Drive, which would be north of Edwards. And we took care of the depression in the road on uh, Maple Heights Drive. The other thing we need to do is take a look at the amount of trees that are encroaching on the roadways. If you don't do anything before, suddenly you're taking down a large tree. So if we could just trim back some of the brush, it might be advantageous. And if you're over on County Trunk T, John travels this daily, Nelson Lane to Glidden Drive is going to be pulverized, and Dan too, I guess. This week. It will be pulverized this week, and the paving will be accomplished next week. <clears throat> okay, questions, comments?
All right, that's for starters. First responder group agreement with the county has apparently finally been approved. I say finally because it's gone now to the EMT groups. My latest correspondence was dated September 12th and uh, indicated that they have finally had a meeting of the EMR crew chiefs uh, to go through the latest revision. And um, he thanked us for the delay in uh, approving this until it was a workable item and doable. I checked with our, uh, let's see, our crew chief. Crew chief, and yes. he indicated that he had no problems with it. John is a member, so John, what did, do you have a take on it or not? Yeah, I think it, it's a lot better than it was, so um, they're not demanding as much stuff. Uh, and so it, it should be the final version of what right. we have. It was, there was some wording in there that wasn't right for the first couple of them, so, but it's worded right now, so okay. I, I would be in agreement of it. What level of compensation do you get for that premium rate? What's that? What's the level of compensation you get workman's comp for the premium rate of $150? That would be through the town. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. What level of coverage do you get for that? I'm not sure. I'd have to ask Linda that. It's based on that rating system that, remember when our agent Del Herbold was here a few meetings ago? Uh, the rating system for, was it a combination of EMTs, EMRs, first responders throughout the state, John? Am I stating that I think that it's for correct? everybody that's covered by our workers' yeah. compensation, mm -hmm. but the upper liability is only like $5,000. Right. It's not very much at all. Oh, you mean how would they, like, if somebody got hurt? Well, I mean... They would take what, what your level is and they would have to base it off of a full-time person at that level, yeah. so. Level of pay right. for a full-time person, but only up to a certain amount, correct? So it's nothing that's been 100, Yeah, he came up with the estimate of $150 per first responder per year. To get, they haven't established what level you'd be compensated at. I, well, everybody, if it would be if as, as EMRs or whatever, you would be compensated as a, because there are no paid EMRs in the area, you would be compensated okay. as a full-time EMT of the closest municipality. Base, right. Okay. So they might have to go probably to Green Bay to get a full-time EMT crew or wherever, you know, and right. you would be compensated at that level. At that level, yes. whatever that level may be. Yes. Okay, That's so the uh, six figures. <laughs> yeah, I wish. The only other uh, comment I did, question I had was on the very front page it says, now therefore, in consideration of number one, agreement shall become effective on May 1. Yeah. And that May 1 is important only because that's when our new medical services advisor whatever came about and that's when he wanted it dated so it will be retro to may 1st you don't have any outstanding claims back to that date do we? no we don't have anything <laughs> i need a motion then to approve this i'll make a motion to approve the first responder group agreement okay. i'll second it we have a motion and a second, and previously it was going to the first responder group, and then I think the eventual end, Linda, did it also show the uh, town board approval? Yes, the last page is um, My, the EM uh, services director, and then each, munis each municipality as well. No. Or fire department. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 
New business items, discussion and action, zoning classification of Bellamy Institute in the city limits. Core area, public information, input, discussion, meeting Wednesday, October 23, <clears throat> 2013 at 6 p.m. John, you want to handle that? Uh, yeah, we had a uh, meeting on September 12th at 6 where we stuffed the envelopes and got them ready to mail. Um, they have been mailed out. Um, and it wasn't for the informational meeting on October 23rd. Uh, at that time, there'd be a, a questionnaire from the county for each person that's in that core area to uh, fill out. And after that, we were still on schedule to have a meeting November to compile the results with the county. And then we figured we'd, we would have a second meeting in December, another public meeting informational meeting so um, and then after that we would we would have to decide whether we recommend to the town board that we put a um, zoning amendment together for everybody that would want it so it'd be a group deal where you, either you could get on board or you might not want to get on board. So we will know more after the 23rd when the people come in and tell us if they really want this or if they don't. Your informational letter indicates that it's an opportunity right. to give property owners chance to the push. opportunity to provide input to the plan commission and the planning department on potential rezoning of the properties in the area. So everybody got the maps as well? Everybody got that letter. They got a map of their area. If they were in Valmy, of course, they got a Valmy map. If they were an institute, they got an institute. Okay. Um, and, um, so all the property owners in the affected area wouldn't have been notified, right? Every property owner in the affected area, yes. There was uh, close to, I don't know the exact count, but there was close to 250. 260. 260? Okay, okay, 260 mailings that went out. All right, we'll have more notice of the activities then before October 23. Correct. <clears throat> Next item would be the disaster preparedness. Strategies and best practices, training opportunities sponsored by the Senior Officials Workshop, December 12th. So if you are a senior. Well, <laughs> junior? It's in Manitowoc County, if you care to attend. So proper notification, you might be able to get your place. <clears throat> Bay Lake Bank, uh, depository resolution for authorized signatures. Normally we do have uh, three people uh, authorized to do the signing of checks. And our checks do require two signatures. So it will be the clerk treasurer along with the chairman and the vice chairman. So in this regard, uh, we needed to remove Tom German and insert uh, Dan Whipple, so I need a motion to approve. So I'll make a motion to approve. Motion Second. by John, seconded by Chuck for the change, and is that going to be okay with the bank? Correct. The bank needed a formal resolution All right. on file. We don't have to do one of ours. We could just do one of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> the approval of a voucher's bills and claim as they already went through and you looked at them. Need a motion first to approve. Well, did we approve the voucher's bills and claims August 20, 2013? September 23rd, 2013. I'll second that. Motion made in a second. Do we have any questions or comments?
Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It's carried. The announcements uh, Historical Society presents the Kaisel Farm history, and if you were listening to the official Door County Radio News Station, our clerk treasurer was the guest of Vinnie Allen this morning. Mm -hmm. Dang, I missed that. You missed that. I missed that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, well, we're, Linda. we're very appreciative of Eddie Allen and WDOR for having that opportunity. Um, for, the his, for our historical society and other um, nonprofits in the area, he gives them an opportunity to go on the air, promote your event, tell you a little history about the event, about your organization. So we truly appreciate that, and there is no charge for it. So. Okay, uh, the Geisel Farm history will be on Sunday, September 29 at 2 at the town hall. Public work uh, session on the budget is two, Thursday, October 3. And our next meeting is October 21. If you're interested in the convention in Madison, it's October 27, 29. This is the Towns Association. Do we have a Due date on application for a reservation? Uh, I believe it's October 8th, and I would be interested in going for one day. Well, can we? I think uh, a couple other clerks from Door County are going as well. Do we have to send any supervisors to actually do the supervision? <laughs> that will be up to the supervisors, I guess. <laughs> it is in Madison, you know, so yeah. things could get very interesting. I know the county, <laughs> county board is there today. Stay away from the county. Okay, the other coastal byway grand opening Thursday, October 31. But that has been changed or not? This is the there's photo actually, shoot. there's two um, photo, photo shoots shoot, going on. This is the photo shoot on behalf of Wisconsin Public Service Foundation. Okay, but this Thank October you. 31 is what? October 31st, they're shooting for the official grand opening ribbon cutting ceremony of you, all the kiosks. Cut the mm -hmm. Fine. All right, check. Anything on the day that? So, yeah, okay. So we're going to simultaneously cut and open eight or ten of these things or something? Is that what they're? Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Should be good. <sighs> Okay, your correspondence was all there. You had fire uh, yeah. reports from the city. Uh, just a comment on that. Yes. Uh, looking through some of these and highlighting, uh, I think, you know, I think there's a, a duplication of services that occurs uh, quite frequently. Um, 3303. 33. <laughs> yeah. I mean. I got that one, too. Yeah. And we're. We're, billing, we're being billed on a per incident basis. I mean, no, no, no. no. but I mean, no. well, just to get to the gist of it, is that the only difference is the sheriff will bill for the second and more a false second alarm. Return, a return, yeah, or false. Yeah. Well, it's just that you know the fire department responds, the sheriff, yeah, responds. Right. Uh, we've got Jacksonport responding. In some cases, we had at least three, three agencies re uh, responding to the same uh, call. Right. Um, okay. I think you know when it comes time to negotiate for our uh, our contract. Six years from now, Dick, hang on to it. <laughs> well, that's the problem with seven-year negotiation. No, that's not really a problem. Trust uh, me an advantage in this case. Aren't, aren't we required by law now that you must have a fire department uh, personnel there? You must have a first responder. You must have a sheriff's department. Or is that incorrect, John? For water rescue. For Just for water rescue? Well, no. What? Car, I mean, accidents, car accidents. And They've got a lot of money invested in equipment. They have to get that boat out in the water periodically. Yeah. Well, know, the, but the car accidents, it's a page. The cops are coming so that... When these guys bump into each other and end up going home after somebody's already... Uh, well, let me put yeah. it this way. If you're in the accident, don't you want as much help as needed there? Well... <laughs> or would you rather just say, ah, we'll call them later? Call them if we need Call them if we need well, you. Okay, I, Meanwhile, I you're back I in town and somebody's point. dying, right? 
It's like if the ambulance is coming for you, I don't care, but if it's coming for me, you better hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess it's falling on deaf ears. Right. Pretty much. Yeah, okay. It's better okay. to have too many people coming yeah, and turn them back than it is to have not enough people coming. So. Okay, the preliminary estimate of January 1st, 2013 population. We are increased by 27 persons. I wonder if we could find who they are. Okay. <coughs> And we are now at 2,655 total. Uh-oh. And you had two withdrawals of the six people. DNR Natural Resources Manager Force. Anybody have any idea what the, why this happened or what? I was trying to figure that out. It is near Schwartz um, and Arctur Lakes. And I can't figure out why the DNR would be withdrawing from managed forest, but maybe they've decided to do something else with the property. Well, the landowner request. Maybe they had to come out and the didn't DNR comply. Is the Are landowner. you familiar with that, Greg? Well, the DNR was mm -hmm. not. This is the manufactured managed forest. forest land. It was a withdrawal yeah. order. Would it have to be the property they bought from Dick? Before? No. No. Uh -oh. Well, it's only 30 it, uh, acres. Yeah, Shireen uh, Smith. It's 70 acres. It doesn't change. 30 the acres, and then uh, this was near Schwartz Lake. 30 and 40 acres, 70 yeah. acres. Yeah. Unless they're planning. That would be one of the foresters either build it up or just hold it. Transferring that property to another uh, uh, category. We do know that it's a requirement right. that the legislation mm -hmm. uh, is something. We get them back taxes. Okay, and in the 2013 Wisconsin Great Lake Chronicle, you have a picture on the cover of Washington Which Island Schoolhouse. Right, right you, you can pass it along here. Yeah. Want to take a peek? Oh, we that. do have a copy. Yep. Okay. Oh my God, you're stuck. Linda, can you explain that last sheet? Uh, the transportation. The shared revenue and expenditure. Um. Department of Revenue notice. And, uh, That's our, our um, I seem to have lost my last page here somewhere along the line. Oh, there it is. Um, yes, the amount that uh, we will receive yet in November, that will be our last shared revenue payment for the year, $40,058. Um, out of the total, 45603 And I just received this year's estimate, and unfortunately, I don't remember if it was higher or lower. But we'll find out on budget night. Okay. Please, no surprises. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the Wisconsin Great Lakes Chronicle. Agenda item for the next meeting? Do we have any? You ever done that? Let us know if you have anything coming up. It's October 21. Thank you. Okay, I think we've covered everything else. Motion would be in order to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. A second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 And we are.